Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Christina M. Castro. I am Taos Pueblo and Jemez Pueblo. I am guest curator of Relocated, Urban Migration, Perseverance, and Adaptation. And I'm really excited to be here um, and share a little bit of information about this exciting exhibit. Um, so yeah, relocation. That was a program, a federal program, that happened in the 50s through the early 70s. And it basically piggybacked on existing policies like the military. So a lot of our um, tribal members from the Pueblos participated in uh, the early um, American wars, First World War, Korean War, Second World War. And when they came back, after having been gone so long, there really wasn't a lot of economic opportunity. Also, you have a lot of displacement because of the boarding school era that already separated people from their community. So in the 50s, as we're seeing the development of industry in the United States, planes, trains, automobiles, all the things, industry moving, uh, factories being built, um, shipments of goods coming into the docks in um, big metropolitan areas, they needed a workforce. But more than that, it was a assimilation policy. So it provided a workforce, a low-level workforce, but also was an attempt to assimilate Native people into the dominant society. At the time, this was kind of like the idea that came out of the Miriam Report in the late 1930s, a federally initiated report on the status of Indian country, and it revealed a lot of inequity. And at that point, the federal government was either going to have to pump more money into uh, tribal communities to get them up to speed in all the ways, infrastructurally, economic development, education, all the things, um, which we're still dealing with today. But another option was, hey, there's all this big industry popping up in cities and we need a labor force. So they promoted relocation as a great opportunity to go to cities, to go to places like Los Angeles or San Francisco or Cincinnati or Chicago. So between the 50s and the 70s, you saw this huge influx of native people from reservations and tribal communities all across the United States moving to cities. And um, as a result of that, that's where AIM came from. That's where the American Indian movement started. Um, the era of powwows came out of this era, as well as Indian community centers like those in San Francisco or downtown Los Angeles or the Chicago Indian Center. These came out of this era, and it was an opportunity for Native people to commune, to hang out. Because keep in mind, at this time, um, People were coming like straight off of their pueblos and reservations. They maybe had never ridden an elevator before or used um, clocks or even had a television. So all of this was so exciting, but it was also very foreign. And so these communities helped people adapt to the times. And um, wow, when I think of the resilience um, of these people who made that first jump to go to the cities, uh, in spite of being scared and not knowing what to expect, it really is a testament to our indigenous excellence. I would like to contextualize the relocation program in a larger narrative of indigenous migration and adaptation. Our stories um, as indigenous people, as Pueblo people, even Jemez people, which is where I hail from, or Taos, um, Jemez specifically, apparently our people have been moving for generations. So adaptation and resilience, I would like to say, is a huge part of this story. I would like to embrace this era in a positive light and highlight what people did at that time to provide the best opportunities for their children and families. There was a lot that Pueblo people had to give up through relocation in exchange for uh, job security, um, a consistent paycheck and things of that nature, they had to leave their pueblos. Um, our people had to give up their language. They had to give up the close-knit culture and community that we have in our pueblos. That wasn't an easy decision. We are adaptive and we are resilient. And so I invite you all to come to this exhibit and see for yourself the resilience of Pueblo people 
And um, in spite of the ongoing effects of policies like boarding school and relocation, we are still here. We're still proud of who we are. We're still learning our languages and reclaiming our traditions. That's something to be commended. If you would like your photo and your family highlighted in this exhibit, please submit it via Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag Pueblo Relocated. We will compile these photos and add them to the revolving screen in our exhibit. So we invite you to come out to the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center to check out this beautiful exhibit. It's a very heartfelt exhibit and um, it will be running through the end of the year. Ta'a, tekenopa, we look forward to seeing you.